These notes are on more traits about the unit circle. So there are a couple of things that we want to point out here. Um, the first is that um, when I was working with my unit circles, I was working with triangles. So let's draw in a triangle here. And let's for a moment pretend that we don't know the radius. So we have radius is some radius. We know this is an x length, we know this is a y length, and we're going to call this angle theta. So if I want to find x and y, which is what we actually did in our unit circle, all of these are x's and y's. It's just that we were allowed to find them without using trig because we had these special right triangles, because we knew um, the and the radius. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set up our trig ratios. So we know that sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse and cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now if I want to solve for x and y, I simply multiply by r, which means if I'm trying to find a point on the unit circle, any point, not just our special ones, these are all of our special ones, but any point on the unit circle, the point or sorry, any point on any circle, the point is going to be x comma y, r cosine theta comma r sine theta. One way that I remember this after I've derived this is just that alphabetically x comes before y, alphabetically c comes before s. So when I'm doing my unit circle, my r becomes 1. So for the unit circle, this becomes cosine theta comma sine theta. Um, the other thing I want to keep in mind here is that we know that um, tan theta is, um, oh, so we're going to find tan theta also. So tan theta is opposite over um, adjacent. But now we know that y is r sine theta, and we know x is r cosine theta. And because we're dividing by the same number, we now know that tan equals sine theta over cosine theta. Um, whoops, tan theta. Um, another important trait that we need to know about the unit circle is this idea of coterminal angles. So coterminal angles mean basically that there are lots of ways to land here. I could land here by going positive 30 degrees. I could land here by going negative 360 degrees. Sorry, 330 degrees. I could land here by going 2 pi plus pi over 6. I could land here by going negative 2 pi, negative um, 11 pi over 6. So there are lots of ways. And in fact, we can sort of um, um, generalize these ways by saying that um, the angle theta or theta can equal theta plus 360 degrees, depending again if you're in degrees or radians. The first one being for radians, the second one being for um, degrees. Oops, this should be an n, and this should be an n. And the n's here meaning that any number, any integer, so I can go around my circle five times and land on a 30 degree angle, or I can go around my circle negative 10 times and land on a 45 degree angle. Um, that coterminal meaning that I can just keep going around the circle for the rest of my life. Um, the next um, thing I want to mention here is the way that we can actually label the quadrants. So if we go back and look at our unit circle, um, we now know on this unit circle that my x and my y are cosine theta, sine theta. 
which means I can actually look for some patterns here. So if I notice here, all of my cosines here are positive. So are my sines. And since we know that tan is sine over cosine, I can say that all of my trig functions are positive in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, um, however, I can see that my all of my x's are negative, meaning all of my cosines are negative. So the only thing that's positive here is sine. Of course, again, because tan is sine divided by cosine, if one is negative, it's going to be negative. Um, in quadrant three, I should have made this a Roman numeral, I apologize. Just convention-wise, we always name our quadrants using Roman numerals, so quadrant two. In quadrant three, we have that they're both negative, so sine and cosine are negative, but for tan, we divide sine and cosine, and a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So tan is positive. In our last quadrant, we have our cosines being positive. Our sines are negative, Positive divided by a negative gives a negative, so tan is negative, so our cosine is positive. And the way that I was taught to remember um, that it's all positives, sines are positives, tans are positive, and cosines are positive, was the acronym All Students Take Calculus. So there's my all there's my sine, there's my tan, and there's my cosine. The last thing we want to talk about um, in our unit circle, a trait for our unit circle, so um, I'm just going to write this as all students take calculus, and you can see that on the previous page. The last thing we need to talk about is um, some of the relationships between um, sine and cosine. So we know where we know what happens when we have um, um, sine of an angle, but we'd really love to also know what happens when we have sine of a negative angle and cosine of a negative angle. Well, when we take the sine of a negative angle, we can imagine that that's just a reflection over the y-axis. And so up here, my signs are positive, right here. All of, the, all of the y values of these trig functions are positive. So if I reflect them over the y axis, sorry, excuse me, the x axis, they end up below, and in below they're all negative. So the sine of a negative angle is going to be the negative sine of that angle. So if we know sine of 45 is positive, Root, three, root 2 over 2. Then if I take negative 45, that's going to be down here, which is a negative root 2 over 2. For cosine, it's slightly different, though, because when cosine is positive, cosine is positive in this quadrant and this quadrant. And so when I'm looking at cosine being positive, when... Sorry... Yes, when I'm looking at cosine being um, a positive rotation, um, I actually am looking at, yes, when I'm looking at cosine being a positive rotation, um, and I'm reflecting over the x-axis again, I can see that my cosines actually keep their signs. So my x's stay both, both positive and both negative. So cosine stays a positive. So these are reflections over the x-axis.